Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and to today's video, which is a very highly requested video. And also it's a video which I did promise you guys last winter and for one reason or another, I just didn't get around to filming it. And then it got too late in the season. So finally, here I am to bring you guys a coat comparison video with the sort of core classic coats from the brand The Curated. Right, now before I get started with the coats comparison, I just wanna clear up one little thing uh, because some people think that I own The Curated or that I co-own it or have some sort of involvement in the company. I don't, I'm very flattered that you might think that uh, because I am just genuinely a fan of the brand. And I do of course have my blazer collaboration with The Curated, which all came about just because I was a fan of the brand. I discovered them a few years ago and then myself and the actual owner, whose name is Nicola, uh, we just started chatting and then became friends. And then it was in 2020, the early stages of 2020, that we started discussing, or she, she approached me and asked me if I would like to do a Blazer collaboration. I said yes. And then it was August of 2020 that we launched our first Blazer in collaboration with each other. And yeah, that's that's basically my only affiliation with The Curated. I am just a, a consumer and a fan, and I have the Blazer collab as well. Right, so what can you expect from today's video? Well, here I've got three of their really core coats. They did have more styles than the three that I'm gonna discuss in today's video. However, I've been told by Nicola that some of them are being reworked. So here I've got the three which are actually available in several different colors and lots of different sizes on the curated website. So I've got the classic, the London, and the boyfriend. So those are the three styles that I'm gonna focus on today. They have recently brought out a new one, which is the wool trench, which I do not own. So therefore that one is not going to feature in today's video. And if anyone wants to skip a certain style and go on to the next, I'll leave timestamps for each of these styles down below in the description box. And for full disclosure, I know that I have a business relationship with The Curated, but this has been in no way sponsored. I haven't been paid to do this video. It's just one that you guys have requested time and time and time again for quite a few years, actually. So that's why I decided to film it. However, I do have gifted items within this video. So for anyone that's ever read the disclaimer down in my description box below the video, you will know that gifted items are obviously a form of advertising. So in the light of being fully transparent, that's where we're at. Right, now we can finally get started. So I'm going to start off with the classic coat because this was the first style that I ever had from the curated. It's essentially the coat that sort of sparked my love affair with this brand. Now, first of all, I'm gonna discuss the fabric. Now, the fabrics of all the three coats that I've got here today are all the same, albeit obviously different colors, but they are all a wool and cashmere blend. So it's 70% merino wool and 30% cashmere. And perhaps for anyone out there that has got one of these coats, you will feel that they are so beautifully soft. And it's that very hefty amount of cashmere within this sort of wool mix that makes them so beautifully soft. Now, given that this is quite a luxurious fabric and a very delicate fabric, of course, being made from all natural fibers, there are no synthetics in here whatsoever, that does mean that they are dry clean only. And I know that you guys are more than likely, I'm gonna sort of preempt this question of how do you care for them or wash them? Well, they are dry clean only, so ideally you need to take them to a dry cleaners. If anyone has attempted to wash one of these coats at home, do let us know how that panned out down in the comments below. Um, but I am a firm believer in only washing a coat or laundering a coat in whatever way it may be, whether it's taking it to the dry cleaners or attempting it at home, when it actually needs it. So as you would have seen in a video a few weeks ago, I pack away my winter coats and then when I get them out to do my wardrobe switch over, I hang them all up on a rail bit by bit because I've got a lot of coats and I give them a steam. And this for me sort of gives them a freshen up. I have yet to get any of my coats dirty. So 
In all honesty, I have not actually washed or laundered, taken to the dry cleaners, any of these coats. But that is the laundering advice that I would give, is to treat them with the care that they deserve and to only take them to a dry cleaners. But when they need it, if you have a steamer or maybe perhaps you want to invest in a steamer, that's great. It's a really good way to freshen up any of these kind of wool and cashmere coats. Now having a steamer will also come in handy to remove any creases I steam mine at the beginning of the season, as you would have seen in that video a couple of weeks ago, and that's it. I've never had to re-steam a coat. That said, I do remove my coats when I'm sitting down, like if I'm on the train or if I'm in the car, I do tend to remove my coat so that I don't get any crease lines. But because it's such a sort of, I wouldn't have said it's a heavy fabric, but it's definitely heavier than a, a cotton fabric, like what you might have on a trench coat. So actually the weight does tend to keep creases out. However, if there is anyone out there that has a coat from the curated, perhaps you commute and you sit down in it every day, do let us know how your coat has fared during that commute down in the comments section below. As always, the comments are fully open for you guys to give your honest feedback and any additional nuggets of info that might be useful to anyone else here in the audience. Another point about the fabric is warmth. And a question that I do get asked on a regular basis is, in what sort of temperatures can you wear these coats from the curated? Like, will they be suitable for winter? Well, one thing that I should mention, I live in the south of England, south of the United Kingdom. And so we have relatively mild winters. Our temperatures don't really drop below zero very frequently. It's rare that we have snow. And even when we do, it melts after a couple of days or even after an hour and just turns into like a slushy goo. Uh, so this point is very much gonna be dependent on where you are in the world and what sort of temperatures your winters get to. For me, yes, I will wear this all throughout winter. Granted, maybe sort of February, end of January to February time, which are our coldest times of year, I often do tend to favour a puffer coat. But that said, the weather can be a little bit hit and miss. So if we have a more milder winter, then yes, I will keep wearing these. And of course, I'll layer underneath my cashmere jumpers and perhaps I might have a thermal on. But these are definitely warm enough for me to wear here in the south of England. If you're in Canada, however, no, this is not gonna be a winter coat for you, but it would probably make a lovely autumn and spring coat. Now moving on to the style. So as I've mentioned, this was actually the first coat which was created by the curated. And it's just a very, I mean, the, the clue is in the name. It's a very classic design. It's single breasted, but it has no closings on it. So there's no buttons, no magnets, no clasps or anything like that. And they do also come with a belt, which has no belt loops, as you will notice. And some people think that it's a little bit odd that they don't come with attached belt loops because actually what you do get when you order a coat from the curated is a little square of the same matching fabric that you can cut up. You could either take it to a tailor if you don't feel confident, but perhaps I'll show you guys this over on Instagram. I might make a little reels or just some stories to demonstrate to you guys how you can make the belt loops for these coats, but they don't come with them attached. So you can cut up the fabric, either take it to a tailor or do it yourself and add in the belt loop to wherever you want them. Some people think this is a bit weird and a little bit lazy of the brand, but actually I think it's a benefit because it allows you to sort of place those belt loops where you want them if you want them, because this coat looks incredible without the belt. The only problem is if you do decide to wear it with the belt and then you take it off while you're out somewhere, you have the risk of losing the belt. So the belt loops, you can make them, you can add them in, or you can wear the coat without the belt as it is. There are two sort of open patch pockets, what I call them as patch pockets, where they're very visibly sewn onto the outside of the coat with the visible stitching, which is very reminiscent of brands like Max Mara. The difference being, and I'm gonna get to price in a moment, but the difference being that this is affordable luxury, which is what the curated is all 
about. So you will see some design features that perhaps you might have seen before on some of these big designer brands, but the difference is you're just not paying for that label which is stuck inside, which is what causes that huge markup. Right, now one other thing I'm gonna touch on with regards to, I suppose, quality and style is lining. These coats are not lined and that goes for all of the ones that I've got on the rail here. This is not a sign of poor quality, this is simply how this design of coat is supposed to be. They're not supposed to be lined. Lining affects how a garment moves, it affects how it hangs on the body, it affects the weight and given that this fabric it's not really heavy, but it does definitely have a weight to it because it's relatively thick. It would make the coat so much heavier. And I personally love how the coats move in this fabric. They're very, very fluid and they just look absolutely beautiful. And it is not, again, it is not a sign of poor quality or laziness on behalf of the brand. This is simply just how this style of coat is supposed to work. Right, now let's talk about sizing. So just for reference, because you guys will see me in the cutaways, I am five foot nine, which I think equates to about 180 centimeters, which puts me in the tall category. I would be classed as tall, I'm above average height. And I am a UK size 10. Now, one thing I like about the curated is that they not only offer a conversion chart so that you can see because their sizes go in extra small, small, medium, in fact, they're extra, extra small, in some cases, extra, extra, extra small, all the way up to extra, extra large. And they show you what your equivalent size would be, whether you have, um, whether you're in Australia, the US, European. So there's a really good size chart there, but they also offer a measurement chart, which I think is so incredibly important because offering the precise measurements of a garment will allow you to measure at home and to see what works best for you. And that in turn, technically, this is the theory behind it, should cut the returns because of course, a lot of people these days, when a brand like The Curated tends to just be, or most accessible via online. I think they actually have a concession within Gallery Lafayette in Paris and also a store in Australia somewhere, but I am sorry I've forgotten. Um, but basically when brands do tend to be predominantly online, a lot of people order two sizes and of course then you have to return one. And I don't have the statistics, but it actually costs brands a fortune to have returns. And it also adds to all those carbon emissions as well. So ideally the theory or the plan is, I think for a lot of brands to try and cut the rate of returns, which is why they offer the measurements chart. Now, according to the conversion chart, for me, a UK 10, I would be a size small. I had a size small in this coat originally and I found that it wasn't quite big enough for me to have in the sort of more slouchy style that I prefer and I couldn't layer underneath slightly thicker knitwear when it got a little bit cooler. I could, it was fine with just a t-shirt underneath or perhaps a very thin cashmere, but when it got to wearing slightly thicker knits, it was just no good. So I have sized up one size to a medium and I would recommend that for anyone who is not petite and for anyone that wants to layer over slightly thicker garments come sort of winter time. Now my only criticism of this coat, and I'm gonna kind of get to lengths of each style in a moment, but my only criticism for the classic coat as a taller person is that I could do with it being a little bit longer. It's not my ideal length for a coat. Whilst I still love it, I would prefer things to fall sort of mid calf on me. But the bonus of the length of this coat means that it's not going to swamp anyone with a petite body shape. So that's why the curated is often quite popular for anyone who needs something in more of a petite fit because they go down to quite small sizes and because the length isn't going to drown you. And finally, I'm going to touch on price. So the current price of the classic coat is £420. And this is actually when you do sort of a a comparison to other brands, luxury big 
label brands which you see out there, that's about half the price of the equivalent of their coats which are made from the same fabric composition. I say the same, it's often the same or less of a quality fabric composition. So again, as I discussed earlier, that's what the curated is all about. It's all about cutting those hefty markups and bringing us these sort of luxury pieces at a more affordable price. Right, now I'm gonna move on to the London coat. And I have already talked a lot about the fabrics when I was speaking about the classic coat. So I'm not gonna talk so much about the fabric of this one because it's the same. It's the same 70% merino wool and 30% cashmere blend. But I'm gonna talk more about the sort of style, fit, cut and sizing of this one. And then at the end, you guys are gonna see a comparison of all the three styles together. So the London coat. First of all, this one is double breasted. And as you can see, it does have a fastening on it. So it has this double breasted button detail. However, it also comes with the belt. Now my advice for this coat would be to absolutely not add the belt loops. And the reason for that is because it's quite a sort of masculine cocoon shape of coat. In fact, the name, the London coat is very, very apt because this is very reminiscent of the sort of traditional coats predominantly in menswear that you would have seen or that we do see in some of the biggest sort of tailoring outlets in London. It is a very stereotypical and not in a bad way, but London British style of coat. So yes, the belt. My advice would be to not add the belt loops to permanently sort of have them there. You can wear the coat with the belt, but I think it looks beautiful as this very sort of oversized and slouchy cocoon shape. And I just think that adding the belt loops and then wearing the coat either just with the belt dangling off the belt loops or removing the belt entirely, I just think that the loops would sort of ruin the aesthetic slightly. So aside from the slightly more masculine, more oversized, double-breasted fit, this one, the pockets are different. They are the side slanted pockets, which are built into the coat, as opposed to the patch pockets, which are sewn onto the coat. And this one, the biggest sort of change to note is that it has a drop sleeve, which means that the sort of armpit is lower placed which is a very good bonus if like kind of what I've got on today, you've got a really big chunky knit or something that has more of a bat wing sleeve to it. This is the kind of knitwear that you can wear with this type of coat because it doesn't have that sort of effect of bunching it up by your armpit. There's a lot more space around there to accommodate for chunkier knitwear. Now the London coat is actually the longest out of the three that I've got here. So in comparison to the classic coat, if we just take a size small from both coats, the classic coat is 108 centimeters long, whereas the London coat is 114 centimeters long. So there's a few centimeters of extra length there. So if you are looking for a coat that's perhaps a little bit longer, I think that's why I tend to opt for this one more over the classic coat, just because there is that little bit of extra length. If you are perhaps a taller person and you just want that bit of extra on the bottom, then this is the one that I would advise. And finally, moving on to the boyfriend coat, which in all honesty is my favorite of all the coat styles. It's my favorite kind of fit. It's my favorite style. If there were one coat from the curated that I could have in all of the available colors, it would be the boyfriend coat. Now, again, the fabric exactly the same, 70% merino wool, 30% cashmere, so all of the care sort of options that I talked about when I was discussing the classic coat all apply to all of these three coats. Now, in terms of style, this is essentially the more masculine, hence the name, the boyfriend coat, the more masculine version of the classic coat. It's the same single breasted fit, again with those visible patch pockets on the front. However, it has a dropped sleeve. So in the same way to the London coat, if you have more of a baggy or a bat wing knitwear, this is great for wearing those knitwears with. It also has a much 
wider sleeve. So if you have a wider sleeve on your knitwear, again, you've just got a little bit more space in the boyfriend coat to accommodate that kind of knitwear. And once again, the boyfriend coat does also come with a belt, which I've actually got on here at the moment. And one little design change that the curated made over time, and I think this was just listening to consumer feedback, which is one thing that I think is really, really good about the curated. They listen to consumer feedback, listen to their customers, and always sort of work on their products to make them better. So here, what you might be able to see, I'll probably have to show you guys this more thoroughly in the cutaways, but there's like a, what we call a temporary belt loop there. And it's essentially just a string belt loop. Now you still get the square of fabric with these coats that you can turn into permanent and more sort of matching belt loops if you want, but it does look beautiful left open. It looks equally as beautiful belted as well, kind of wrapped up almost like a dressing gown or like a robe coat. And in terms of length, this one actually just falls short of the London coat. So it's longer than the classic. And I think that's just more so because it's a slightly more oversized, so therefore you would gain a little bit of extra length, but it's not quite as long as the London coat. And once more in terms of size, which actually, sorry, I don't think I mentioned that for the London coat, but I have them both, or rather all three coats I have in a size medium, which technically would be one size up from my normal size, from a UK 10, which would equate to a size small. I've sized up, even though the boyfriend coat is a little bit more oversized in general. That's, I suppose, something to, something to note. It is a little bit slouchier anyway, but you guys know I do love a slightly more oversized fit. So perhaps in the boyfriend coat, you might not necessarily have to size up, but if you like the fit, as you can see it on me in the cutaways, then I would advise sizing up, especially if you want to accommodate large knitwear come the much cooler seasons. Right, there we go. I know I was a little bit more concise when discussing the London coat and the boyfriend coat, but I'm hoping I've answered your questions and covered a lot of other topics when I was originally starting with the classic coat. And hopefully you guys would have seen the sort of differences in style, fit, how they look belted without the belt, how they hang on the body, sizes, etc., in the cutaways as well. Now, if there's anything that I haven't covered or a question that you don't have the answer to in this video, then please do leave me those down in the comments section below. But otherwise, thank you as always for watching. It's greatly appreciated. And I will see you next time.